Alright, so now in this video we're going to focus on the pin layout for transistors in the TO92 package. So, we have a flat edge here, and then the rest of it is uh, curved around there. It's a plastic casing over the transistor, and so it's known as the TO92 package. Now, I have some drawings here. Normally, we look at transistors in schematic form, and I have the two generic ways that we show this. There's an NPN type and a PNP type transistor. We're only focusing on bipolar junction transistors in this video. And uh, the uh, bipolar junction transistors, they all have an emitter, a base, and a collector. If there's different pin names, if you find the data sheet for a transistor, you see the part number, and it has different pin names, it's a different type of transistor. But uh, the bipolar junction transistors come in either NPN form or PNP form. And the schematic symbol looks like this. So it may be circled, it may not be circled. And it doesn't matter whether they're circled or not, it's the same schematic symbol. What you're mostly looking at is this arrow here. So if the arrow's pointing in towards the base, then you know it's a PNP transistor. If the arrow's pointing away from the base, it's easy to remember. NPN not pointing in, then it's an NPN transistor. The base is the side of the transistor with the bar. And uh, I'll show you some more schematic variations like this coming up. It's hidden down here, and uh, but I'll show you that coming up. So in any case, what we want to do is take this schematic here and match the uh, terminals on the schematic to the terminals on the components and luckily for these three transistors they have the same pin layout their parts I'll start with 2N and uh, they have the same pin layout as far as I know almost every 2N transistor the uh, pin on the left pin number one is the emitter pin number two the base in the middle is uh, the base and then uh, pin number three to the right there is the collector. That's when you're looking at the flat edge. The flat edge of all three of these are facing us. So we have emitter, base, collector. Now, I added another transistor here, the C1815. So the reason why I added this one, for a couple reasons, is uh, I have this transistor kit here. So I have 15 different types of transistors. Their names are right here. And uh, I had a much easier time finding an easy to read data sheet, a bunch of data sheets I should say, for the C1815 than I did for the A1015. So that's the main reason why I picked it. Also, it has a different pin layout. It doesn't start with 2N, and so you get suspicious that it has a different pin layout. And uh, it actually has, when I found the data sheet, Pin number one was the emitter, pin number two now is the collector, and pin number three is the base. So these two pins are opposite from these two pins. Now ideally, it will have a drawing of a TO92 package with the part number on the flat edge facing you. Usually it's a much better drawing than this. It's 3D, it's really clear that it's curved in the back and the flat is in front and you can see the pins. And it may just say one, two, three, or depending on the transistor, it may have letters. As far as I know, when you're looking at the flat side, left is always one, and then two, three, working to the right. I haven't seen a case where they labeled that three. But uh, the instead of numbers, they may use letters. So for the 2N, 22, 22, it may say emitter, base, collector, where these three pins are. The C1815, of course, is emitter on the left, so the same as the 2N type series. But now the collector's in the middle, and the base is on the right. So if it looks like this, it's really easy to tell what it's telling you. Now, the uh, one I have up here... I ran into this 
right before I shot this. I was looking at some data sheets and for the pin layout they showed it looking like this. And what this is, is so you take the transistor and then you point the pins towards you and now the flat edge is pointing up and then when you do that it won't it won't show this I just kinda drew this this way to show you that we're flipping the pins towards us flat edge up but uh, I did write pin number one there so I may say pin number one or E and then two may say two or C and three may say a three or B but uh, that's what it means if you see it where it looks like this the uh, pins are facing towards you and I think it's a lot more rare but sometimes you see it sideways like this again it's the pins facing you and then now the flat edge to the left and again down here is the emitter the base and the collector for a 2N2222 and of course as a reminder the part number is written on the flat side of the transistor this is the 2N2222 it has the A after it it's a slightly improved version and uh, here you can see the C1815 which I haven't used any of these yet it kinda stuck to these other ones I figured I'd save some time and just yank them all out I'm gonna put them all back now so now as promised we come to the schematic diagrams these are different variations so as you can see here we have the part number for the first three you notice the schematic diagram is exactly the same for these first two but the part number is different and so ideally when you're looking at a schematic drawing and you're putting together the circuit the uh, transistor schematic symbol will have the part number there and you will have that part now if you don't these are both NPN transistors but uh, this one can handle more power 2N2222 so the main concern that you would have replacing a 2N2222 with a 2N3904 is whether or not the circuit has more power than the 2N3904 can handle so you gotta look at the data sheets and the uh, power going through the transistor the current and the switching speed and stuff check the data sheet make sure that that component meets the requirements of the circuit because quite often these can be substituted for each other just fine so now this is a PNP transistor the 2N3906 so you couldn't swap it out for an NPN transistor of course I have this drawing next to it to point out so the emitter is the side with the arrow so is this one this one's on top that one's on bottom the positioning of these pins these uh, terminals I should say does not matter they will fit into the whoever created the schematic diagram however it fits best if for whatever reason it's easiest to draw the emitter over here it'll be over there you know and then uh, over here you can see instead of the base being to the left I have the base to the right and also the terminals are not indicated on this one this is probably the way that it's mostly drawn without the terminals indicated but I uh, wrote down the letter for the terminals to make it a little easier to follow alright so now coming down here I just wanted to point out that uh, when I say NPN and PNP I'm actually explaining its semiconductor properties and so we have an N type material a P type material and an N type material normally you'll hear a P type material sandwiched between two N type materials so P and N type materials that's uh, what we use when we use diodes so you can think here we got uh, the P type material the N type material there current can flow through there and also current can flow through that way just the same in fact it's really easy to put one of these transistors in backwards because of that it's uh, n type on each side and so it's actually kinda hard to tell when you got a transistor backwards which is why it's so important to learn the pin layout and so now the reason why it's important 
is because with the NPN type material, we want current to flow into the P type material. We're talking positive to negative, and then through the N type material from base to emitter. What that does is allow current to flow through from collector to emitter. So we want all the current flowing towards the emitter for NPN type. Now, if we put it in backwards by accident, of course, the chemistry looks uh, virtually the same for the most part. And so current will flow in the opposite directions, but we don't want that. The transistor is not made for that. We'll talk about that a little more in the future. The main takeaway is just realize we want, with the NPN transistor, current to flow that way. With the PNP, it's the opposite. The chemistry is the opposite. It's PNP instead of NPN. So we want current to come out of the N-type material, the base. So we'll have current flowing that way from emitter to collector like a diode it'll block it flowing that way and then that will allow current to flow from emitter to collector as long as we uh, bias it properly but in uh, any case that's what we want we don't want instead of current flowing from emitter to base current flowing from collector to base again I'll talk about that coming up just realize this is why it's important that uh, you can identify the pins properly on the transistor because as I said before if you swap out the emitter and collector with each other currents gonna flow through the transistor in a way that's not favorable for the transistor and you may not even know it 